guys, did you just get some letters from colleges that said rejected? And are you feeling sad because you didn't get into some top universities? Or did you get into some top universities and you're scratching your head and wondering, is it worth this huge amount of money that I'm gonna have to pay? Well, today in this video, what I'm gonna talk about is why top colleges are overrated. Before we get into this video though, what I wanna remind everyone to do is subscribe to our channel by clicking subscribe and head to our website, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. Subscribe to our mailing list, keep plugged into Super Tutor TV and check out while you're there, the best ACT prep course ever. It's over 50 hours of video tutoring with me and I've even had private tutoring students quit because the course exists and they realize, oh my God, this basically does most of what you do with me in private tutoring and it's much more convenient. So check it out if you're looking for a good solution to prep for the ACT. And let's get into this. So first of all, just a caveat before I get into this, this video is about why top schools are overrated. That doesn't mean I think top schools have nothing to offer you. I went to a top school and I loved it and I had a really good experience, but that's not to say that there aren't super fun and super awesome opportunities out there at other colleges or there aren't super amazing things going on in other places, or that top colleges have a corner on future success in all dimensions. They don't. And the other thing that I very strongly believe is that everybody in this world has a path, and there's a path for you in this world that you can find that is going to bring you to a better place in your life. And whatever's happened with college admissions there are some things you can control and there are other things that you can't control and you do the best you can and then you work with what you have. And it doesn't mean that your life is over and it doesn't mean that you're never going to find value or you're never going to be insanely successful or any of the above. The truth is that there are a lot of amazing opportunities in this world and you don't have to go to a great college to participate in so many of those opportunities. So without further ado, Let's get into this. The first reason why top colleges are overrated is that you matter more than where you go. Basically, the idea here is that what you are capable of is far more important than what school you go to. If you are amazing enough to get into a top college, the fact that you got in is more important than you actually going to the college. And this is a point that was actually shown to be true in a study by a couple of people. One is named Alan Kruger. He's from Princeton University. And another is named Stacy Dale. She's from Mathematica Policy Research. And they have done several studies actually on the impact of elite higher education on students. First, they found that students who applied to top schools and got in, like they applied to Stanford or they applied to Harvard, they got in and they didn't end up going, ended up as a mass group, when they looked at a large pool of data, they ended up doing just as well as their counterparts who got into those schools and went in terms of income down the road. So it was pretty clear that the students and what they had to offer was the most important ingredient in their success, not the fact that they actually went to the top university, right? Another study that these two did, which uh, they did after that study, found that not only was it just students who had applied and gotten in to say Harvard or Stanford or wherever that had this effect, but it also was true of students who had similar SAT scores to the students who were admitted to top colleges and students who applied to top colleges but did not receive admission to top colleges even though their scores or their grades were in that range. They found that these students too performed just as well financially or very close within statistical, you know, ballpark of where their counterparts that attended these universities and got in did. They did find a few exceptions there. One notably was students who came from lower socioeconomic backgrounds or from particular minorities that might be at a disadvantage, African Americans and Hispanics in particular, that those students did find something of an edge from attending an Ivy League or a top university. But otherwise, the students who attended the top university versus the students who applied to get in had scores that were just as good and didn't get in, they fared just as well in life. The next thing that I wanna talk about is return on investment. And my point here is that what you major in matters more than where you go. So if you're looking to make money or you're looking to be financially stable or that's your end game when going to a top university, it kind of does not matter where you go as much as what you major in. 
And an indicator that I think shows this point is an ROI evaluation or list, which is this calculation that some websites and, and uh, media organizations and research organizations have created and estimated what schools offer the best return on investment for students going to college. Studies have shown that the top colleges are not necessarily what are populating the top return on investment colleges. At the top of their list, the college with the most return on investment was not Harvard, it wasn't Stanford, it wasn't MIT. It was Harvey Mudd. Harvey Mudd is a private engineering college in Southern California that focuses very heavily on real world application of engineering and math and science skills. And you might scratch your head and go, why the heck is Harvey Mudd at the top? Well, Harvey Mudd's really good at placing its graduates into real world jobs. I will say they really emphasize real world and they have lots of relationships with industry. But above all, because it's graduating students into majors that are extremely employable and have higher salaries than other majors. So you've got all of these technology schools, MIT, Caltech, We've got SUNY Maritime College, in-state Colorado College of the Mines, Stevens Institute of Technology. All of these colleges beat Harvard when it comes to ROI. So, top colleges, are they overrated? If you think that going to a top college is your instant ticket to wealth, yes, they're overrated because there's actually other schools that are helping people earn more. And like I said, what you major in is going to be the biggest determining factor in what your earning potential is right after you graduate as well as down the line in your career. So my third point why top colleges are overrated is that top colleges don't necessarily provide upward mobility for low income students. Top colleges, many of them, tend to accept a huge portion of their student body from people who are already in the top 1% of earners in the country. And many of them accept, actually 38 colleges accept more people from the top 1% than from the bottom 60%, which is a little bit crazy. So ironically, there was a study done by Stanford University, Brown University, and California Berkeley, as well as the US Treasury Department, that was out to figure out what effect going to college has on low income students. And what they found was that it wasn't top colleges that were doing the best job at helping equalize the playing field for people with an education. It was actually mid-level universities. So to find this statistics, the researchers developed a new statistic they call a college's mobility rate, which combines a college's share of students from low-income families with its success at propelling them into the upper part of the distribution. So what they did is they looked at data of students whose families growing up were in the lowest fifth of all income distribution in the United States. So kids who grew up in the lowest fifth of the population in terms of income, and they looked at how many of those students or what percent of those students that were in that range ended up in the top fifth of earners by the time they reached their early 30s. They also did one with the top 20% and then ending up in the top 40% of earners. But regardless, the idea is the researchers wanted to find out what colleges are actually lending a hand up and helping improve the economic situation of real human beings who aren't necessarily wealthy. And how are schools giving access to students who don't have a ton of money to help them make that step and create a good life for themselves? And what they found is the colleges with the highest mobility rate are very everyday, plain old, boring schools. Number one on the list is California State University, Los Angeles, which has a 9.9% .9 mobility rate. That means if you go to Cal State, LA, and you start off in the bottom fifth, the bottom quintile of income growing up, you have a 9.9% .9 chance or around a 10% chance of ending up in the top fifth of income after you leave. Two on the list was Pace University, three was State University of New York Stony Brook, four was Technical Career Institutes, five was University of Texas Pan American, six was City University of New York, seven was Glendale Community College. Can you believe that? 7.1%. Eight was South Texas College, nine was California State Polytechnic Pomona, and 10 was University of Texas El Paso. None of these schools are top schools at all. 
But all of these schools are creating economic opportunity for real human beings. So it seems like access to top colleges has a lot more to do with how much money you make than how smart you are or how capable you are at success in life. So I think that's a huge testament to the idea that I don't think anyone can sit around and say that Harvard and Stanford and Princeton and all those kind of schools are the only ticket to bettering your life when it comes to education. So if I could send you away with one message as I close out this video, it's that opportunity is out there. And if you go and you seek out educational opportunity, you can better yourself. I hope you guys liked this video. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Go check us out on Facebook. Like this video if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. And check out our social media. And I hope to see you guys next time on Super Tutor TV. Ciao for now. And good luck figuring out where you're going to college.